Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to my reaction to Dan 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 episode 7. Uh, this episode is titled To a Kinder World. So just a few things before we jump into the reaction. Number one, thank you so much to my patrons, Twitch subs, Kofi members, everyone who supports me. I appreciate it more than I can put into words. Thank you for helping me to do what I love every single day. And then about the anime. Um... I made a prediction last week and it was kind of based off of the fact that number one we saw in with Turbo Baba that the ghosts often like they're left behind maybe because of something that happened something that they haven't made peace with so that was the first hint I think and then also there was another movie anime movie that I watched that kind of gave me an idea about this new ghost, the red, the Akai One Piece no Onna. <laughs> so I, I don't want to talk about that right now. I'll wait for the end of the episode and then I'll get more into that. But I did see that someone last week maybe thought uh, they were under a misunderstanding. I have uh, in the beginning, sorry, I said that wrong. In the beginning of my reactions to episode one, I said that I read ahead in the manga because I didn't know it was going to be an anime, but that was only about four or five chapters. So around the episode when they boiled the crab, that's when I said, okay, I've only seen up to here. Everything after that is anime only. So I stopped reading the manga, obviously, once I found out that it's going to be an anime. So I just wanted to let you know um, and be clear about that. So any prediction that I make, is just because either the anime hinted it or, you know, I'm just always making predictions. There is one moment from a few years ago when I just started One Piece and I saw that Zoro had green hair and Smoker had greenish hair and I was like, they're related. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so my point is I make a lot of random predictions. Um, and then, oh, there was also something very interesting that I wanted to talk about regarding Ida's character but i will i will save that for the end of the video as well for now let's jump in to dan da dan episode seven reaction let's go whoa great perspective Whoa. The balance though and uh, the toenails, I'm not gonna but the detail was Masticate I thought for sure there she was gonna like chop her hair off. I don't know how, maybe with her nails or uh, but they would have been pretty cool too. It's up a spell! Ah! Uh-oh. In, in the Turbo Baba episode, that big one, 
uh, everything was red and now everything's like pinkish so i feel like in the big ghost episodes maybe it will have this theme oh wow oh there he the color just came back Maybe because she's defeated? N nice. It it adjusts the feeling a lot though. The tone of the colors and stuff. It can influence the mood a lot, right? So that's one golden ball though. There's still another one, right? Ghost will revive her, please, dear lord, tell me. <gasps> I mean, something's gonna happen. She's in the opening. It can't end like this. No, I don't want to vibe to the opening song. How can you not, though? <laughs> so fun. Okay, here's my theory. Here's my theory. So you already heard my theory at the end of last week's episode. We got some visuals that reminded me of a certain anime that a movie that i've seen and uh, also there's some other things which gave me this thought process but i will talk more in depth about that at the end at the review part but i'm just gonna make a quick prediction here based on everything i've said what i said last time in, in terms of my predictions this time i'm going to add that since now i know that she's dead which i don't think is like that's not the end of it Probably the ghost is gonna, because clearly this is the, uh, from the symbolism and everything, this is a, the ghost of a mother who lost her child. So maybe she will like uh, sacrifice whatever little life or she has clinging to the current, you know, real world. Maybe she can like, da -da, da -da, da -da, alive Ida, because she clearly in some insane way believes Ida to be her lost child. So any mother, any parent, well, most, when the push comes to shove, they will sacrifice their own lives for their children, right? So I'm guessing. Oh, and and near death experiences, people get brought back from death sometimes. So I I think, and then they have like spiritual experiences, right? So come on. But she's not completely ordinary, right? Whoa! Tell her. Trust her. <laughs> I think that one, that punch to her head could have brought her back to her senses, but also seeing it was probably that. But also seeing her child's life in danger, that's a shock in and of itself. That could shock. Well, it's not her child, literally, but in her mind. Trust her. Wow. So cool the way that looks. Hey, 
Here it comes. Here it comes. <gasps> oh. Oh. That's not something I could have predicted. It makes everything that I thought even like more difficult, knowing that if she got pregnant, not, not, you know, her, it was something like that. Then Oh, she bought her the dress. I already feel like oh no 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 I'm not mentally prepared. I'm not mentally prepared. Her whole, the meaning of her life. why you you have to have the death penalty those guys must die like what other options do we have in society if 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 they're not the oh my god see i there's right and then there's wrong and i know that i shouldn't believe in the death penalty because the government and especially my government would misuse the fuck out of that shit but then i see something like this and i'm like they have to die as simple as that you see a child as collateral you must but then I don't, that's why there is so much. Oh, that's where that comes in. And that's when Maybe all her daughter had the same name or just
She saw all that. No. No way. No, but she doesn't deserve that. She's gonna say what her daughter said. Thank you for everything you've done. It wasn't you, it was those... was beautiful it was not what i imagined though like i thought when i read that someone someone seemed to think that i read the manga ahead and, and knew that character's backstory based on my predictions so that's why i was like no it was just a prediction but i, I thought because someone said that maybe i was right and they and that's how they thought Oh, so she read ahead. But I wasn't right. I thought she lost her baby, like in childbirth or something, because that visual with her in the rain and the and the, like the the blood on her and stuff, it reminded me of a a scene from the movie. I don't wanna say because what if it spoils you? You know? So I'll put the answer, or I'll put the name of the movie in my video description. So the movie that I watched that reminded me of that scene with the woman. And it just, it kind of, but it, there was more to it um, than that. Like, it was obviously the fact that, you know, Turbo Baba, also a lot of the method behind her madness is the fact that she was trying to protect girls that went through you know this trauma so i just assumed a lot of the ghosts that can't find peace it would be because or a lot of the conflict with these yokai or whatever they are ghosts spirits monsters it would be because the, they all have something that keeps them here something that they haven't made peace with something that you know made them monsters in the afterlife <sighs> and the, yeah, I thought maybe it would be the fact that she lost her own child. But I thought it was childbirth because... And that's where the movie comes in. Because imagine... I've been doing a lot of research about, you know, what it's like <laughs> to give birth and the, the circumstances in it. Uh, what could... Not what could go wrong, but people tell their stories because I've been wanting to have kids for a while now so obviously you're if you're interested in something like that you're gonna look up videos you're gonna hear people's stories and you hear all the kind all kinds of stories good ones and bad ones and you know some people have horror stories of what happens in because they don't treat women with like love and kindness because when it comes to giving birth you have to be as relaxed as possible in the most unrelaxing circumstances because you're giving birth but it, it should be a 
beautiful experience and and the more relaxed your body is because it knows how to do like when you throw up your body you don't have to think how to throw up your body just does stuff because it's it's like you know so in, in that sense to put it briefly your body also knows how to give birth um and if you can just like relax and tune into it but the more tense you are the more uh, difficult it becomes so what i'm saying is even if you're on are in relaxed circumstances i know that bad things can happen but the it's just the more likely to be a good experience if you're in a relaxing environment but oftentimes especially in my country especially in the with public um, hospitals and stuff they don't really treat women as like okay this is a wonderful experience you need to be relaxed you need to be happy it's more like your cattle and we just need to check some boxes and like i mean i've heard firsthand experiences of how they treat you it's it's just not very relaxing it's like the anti the most anyway so sometimes because of this horrible way that women are treated that can lead because because to over stressed um and that can lead to losing your children actually um it happened to hanku's mother she had a miscarriage in the hospital because of just bad practicing practices and stress and all kinds of um so i thought something like that happened and maybe that woman left like ran like there was a traumatic birth experience and she left the hospital and then she blamed the people i don't know that's what happened in my head but it feels like <sighs> this is oh, this gives me so much to be angry about here because like on one hand i'm so sad but on the other hand i'm so angry at just the world right now because of what happened to you know the daughter and those people like why were they allowed to do that it makes me so angry i want to kill them there's a whole conversation there that i don't just feel i just don't feel ready for because there's no point in holding on to your anger because we see what happens to that like or to people who hold on to their anger it's like that quote where they say being angry is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die like me being angry and and like losing my mind at people like that it's not solving any problems so the right thing to do is to i don't know steal yourself s t e e l steal yourself i don't know if that's an english saying i think it is and i don't know proactively go about making the world a better place so that women don't need to get themselves in that kind of situation but like if that thing is happening in japan i feel like how can we ever cuz Japan has got a pretty as far as I'm aware a pretty decent support system compared to some other places in the world like South Africa which they give they steal most of the taxes and they give people this much support just enough for people to to not retaliate uh and uh, but that, once again a whole other discussion it's so complicated but if if even if this kind of thing can even happen in Japan then i'm just like is there any hope for my country like what the fuck it's giving me a headache cuz it's real world problems man it's and that anime is supposed to be my escape uh, but to be fair anime often art reflects reality right and we can easily talk about and digest animation because it's not real but it does if it reflects reality it should help us okay think about it process it and and i don't know turn back to the real world later instead of hiding from it instead of fearing it turn back and try and solve problems in the right and the best way but what is the right and best way it's because my first in reaction was like kill them this problem solved they're dead but uh, long term that doesn't really solve anything now does it mm, that's debatable but i cannot get behind <laughs> the death penalty only because of my own government and how they would abuse that we'll leave it at at least she 
found peace at the end. Hopefully, yeah. Um, but this is the kind of episode where I think I'd, I'd have to watch it again. Um, and now I feel like I don't want to talk about the other thing because it's not relevant right now. <laughs> but I, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, first of all, the episode's clearly a 10 out of 10 for me. The visuals were amazing from start to finish. Um, that's in terms of the colors they chose, the movements, the symbolism, the everything it was just very beautiful and almost painful to see obviously in certain parts um voice acting there's nothing there's nothing that i can criticize as i feel here it was all just put together so beautifully and the, the story as well turbo baba's pretty harsh but i mean she's been alive she's been alive she's been around for a long time she's probably seen the worst of the worst so i guess she's kind of like blunt to it now but wow, I felt so bad when she said, like, her, her life's worth nothing. I forgot that there's a, there is a preview. We found a bull, but only one of them. So man, <gasps> that's the cold noodles, right? I had that when I was with my friends uh, around Aichi area. But we went somewhere for the day. Oh, I forgot where, but then we had so man, which... My friend Yuki told me that her mother made so men a lot in summer, so... Looks like I ran out of soup base. Hmm? Okay, but... Quite a difficult episode to process. And I feel like this won't be the only time that we have something like that. Um, especially difficult because, like... Like, if you put yourself in her shoes, it's like, oh, I don't even want to. I don't even want to. Um, but I'm glad that she found peace at the end. And now, even though it's not completely related, I did take the time today to write a little, some thoughts on last week's episode. Um, someone said, or at least, excuse me, I said in last week's episode that I think Ira's like a Tsunibu type character and it's going to be really fun. She seems like a fun type of, character and i haven't really met that many chinibu but uh, my favorite is megumin and she has that kind of vibe um and someone disagreed saying that chinibu is this and this and they were saying basically because aira seems to have a power she can see those spirits or whatever she's not a chinibu and i was like okay but uh, here are my thoughts on the on the matter um so this is regarding last week's episode hey no i said last week that i haven't seen many chinibu characters but my favorite would be megumin who is commonly recognized as a chinibu type so okay i think that's like official i'm not sure in the real world, of course, 8th grader syndrome, that's what Chinibu is literally translated as, 8th um, grader sim syndrome most likely originated from describing early teens who have grandiose delusions, who desperately want to stand out, and who have convinced themselves that they have hidden knowledge or secret powers. A friend told me that many in the real life Chinibu people, uh, kids in school, they would wear bandages on their arm or something, imitating a character from, I think it was Yu Yu Hakusho. And they would imagine the bandages as like sealing away their true powers. It's very cute if you're young or you're playing a game, but it could easily appear strange to people if you truly believe that about yourself, right? Like, if you're playing a game, it's one thing, but if you're going around like, don't take off my bandages, it will release my power. Like, <laughs> you would appear strange to others, okay? In episode 6 of Dan Da Dan, it is clear to me that Ira matches the following. So here's, this is a, the direct uh, description I got from like Wikipedia or something, but that's also how I understood Chunibyu. And I think Ira matches it because, number one, she's an early teen, uh, she has very grandiose delusions about herself. She's so beautiful and her acknowledgement and kindness helps others to face another day. 
She's convinced herself that she is the chosen one by this golden ball because she found it or it fell on her head or something. And she has secret or special powers and needs to use them to save the world. Like she's convinced herself of that, right? And she said specifically she has to save the world. So this was one of my favorite scenes from the last episode that was so funny. So she says, I have been chosen because I'm just too beautiful. And look at their faces. These are the faces of people looking at the Chinibu in real life. This is our reaction to real life Chinibu. You'll see like they're like, oh, cringe. What's going on here? What the hell? Um, so that's in, in here. She says, I must save the world. And then that's their reaction. Kind of like, oh. The expression of her friends after Ira says all these things is exactly how people in real life would react to a Chinibu. Remember, as we saw earlier in episode 6, when Okarin was asking another boy who is spreading rumors about Momo, most people can't see the spiritual world and power. So remember, Okarin transformed, but we could tell that no one else in the room could see Okarin's transformation. And it looked like the boy was being dragged down to Okarun's level, even though Okarun as a spirit was like going up, right? So to me, even if I can see her powers, although not to the extent that she believes she has them, at least not in episode 6, right? She's still a Chunibu to me. My reasons are here, the, these bullet points I already mentioned. The grandiose delusions, secret, I'm the chosen one, I'm so beautiful. Um, so even if I can see her powers, okay, in the real life, the word originated from kids pretending, but in anime, excluding a slice of life one, uh, Chinibu could of course have real powers, I think, just like Megumin. So anime is fiction after all, and the Chinibu character is often used for comedic relief because it's funny, just like Aira and Dan Da Dan, and like Megumin in, you know? Of course, if others believe Chinibu can only be in like slice of life anime where no one actually has any power, that's fine. But to me, it's clear that anime and stories with monsters and magic and ghosts and yokai, whatever, they can still ut utilize Chinibu characters because it's funny. Um, I said somewhere here, you can be talented and beautiful and powerful and still be delusional. To the extent of your power or your beauty or how, you know, like you could be a smart person, but if you like delude yourself about how smart you are, thinking you're above others or whatever, you can still be a Chinibu in my eyes. Um, but that's just me. So then I just wanted to share a, a funny Megumin moment here. Wait, wait. <laughs> the music is just peak to me, right? Uh, here. Look at their faces and I... She's having, she's having a full-on moment here, and they're just like, what the fuck? And it's the same in the last episode of Dan Da Dan. So that's where the delusion comes in. In my opinion, that's where the delusion also comes in. <laughs> so you see how they're in the real world, and she's here in her, in her fantasy world, like, when man stares into the abyss, the abyss stares back. Like, she's... You know, really feeling it. The music is there, but only in her mind. They're, they don't hear the music, I think. That's the joke of a, a Chinibu type character, right? So there's even here somewhere, I feel like I get the same vibe from this scene where she's like, she's trying to spy on us. Get low, her familiar will find us. Like, she's totally in her own world and these two are like, what? 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 What is she doing? Like, <laughs> no, delusional grandiose blah 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 it's funny but you know that's just i i don't know one of my favorite things about megumin is how she often rambles on and on about her delusions while people around her are just patiently or awkwardly watching or listening to her waiting for her to finish in her own world there's background music and she sounds awesome but often those around her she just she sounds crazy ira was only just introduced and she gave me some big chinibu vibes I can't wait to see more. Maybe she will mellow out or maybe as her power grows, so will her delusions. As I said, you can have some talent, beauty, power, but still be delusional about it. At least Ida is, is so in a cute and funny way, in, once again, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I thought that was an interesting discussion. And I just... It, 
and then she's just chilling here having her whole moment and the others are just patiently waiting like okay just finish whenever you're ready so yeah I like Ira and I'm really looking forward to more of her. She was basically on the verge of death. <sighs> and a lot of people, when having a near-death experience like that, or an actual death experience where they were basically brought back, like their hearts start to beat again. Um, I have read stories where people actually, you know, they saw they saw something or and it changes them. So maybe she could be a completely different person from next week. But I hope not, because I do like her personality and yeah we'll see we'll see with time so anyway thank you guys for listening to my ramblings I'm very sorry I couldn't really put into words how I felt about the trauma in the episode it was difficult um there's not much to be said right now but there is various conversations I just feel like the conversations they're too almost too serious to have like just quickly it's like I want to do research. I want to. That's why we need to be good people, man. Just add something. Don't make the world worse at the very least. <laughs> There's too many people making the world worse. But that's a whole other conversation about what is worse, what is better. But at the very least, I don't think there's anyone that can, that can think what those guys did were right. If not killed, they should be put away for life. Why do people like those? Why can they walk free? I hate that so much. But life is complicated. I'm currently watching a show called The Mentalist. Man, and, and I just finished watching Psych and I finished watching Monk and I'm watching all these mov uh, stories about crimes and, and it just makes me feel like overwhelmed that there's too much bad going on in the world and I need some reminders about the good. <laughs> Just tell me some good news, someone. Okay. Thanks again for listening to my rambling. 10 out of 10 episodes from me. And I'm looking forward to next week. See you then. Bye.